Hello and welcome again to the video series for deploying ASAP, Juniper Network's automated support and prevention solution for your network. In this second video, we will explore the ServiceNow user interface in more depth, install advanced insight scripts on Junos devices, and perform some initial configuration of ServiceNow. Switch to the ServiceNow application from the drop-down list at the top of the menu on the left-hand side of the Junos space window. Expand administration and then click ServiceNow devices. If ServiceNow had been installed prior to device discovery, the devices will automatically be placed in this list. If not, you would need to expand ServiceNow devices, select the Add Devices menu, click the desired checkboxes and place them under ServiceNow Management. Devices have been assigned to the default device group for the organization. You can see that AI scripts have not yet been installed by noticing the empty columns under the Script Bundle and Event Profile columns. Ship2 and location addresses have also not yet been defined, nor have any auto-submit policies. We will cover all of these aspects at a later time. Let's start by looking at event profiles. Juniper Networks publishes new versions of AI scripts, which are called script bundles. You can download these from the support site and install them by expanding Event Profiles and Script Bundles and clicking Add Script Bundle. Most often you will want to find the newly installed script bundle in the list. Right click it and select set as default bundle. Click add event profile and you will see that the default script bundle is being used. You can change that as needed. Provide a profile name and optionally a description and select the events for which you want AI scripts to automatically collect troubleshooting data for, should a fault occur. Hover the mouse cursor over an event to learn more about it. By default, all events will be enabled. You can traverse the pages to browse more events. When finished, click Submit and the event profile will be saved. You can right-click this profile in the list and click Confirm to set it as the default profile to be applied when pushing scripts to Junos devices. One method to install the AI scripts is to use the Push to Devices menu option found in the Actions menu or by right-clicking an event profile. However, I prefer the alternate method of using the ServiceNow Devices menu, selecting devices from the list, and using the Actions menu to locate device operations and clicking Install Event Profile. For a moment, let's assume that some AI scripts had been previously installed and that we wish to clear their configuration and remove them. This is required on the SRX platform when upgrading from the 4.x to 5.x family of AI scripts. From the operational mode in Junos, we can use the show version command to confirm whether AI scripts have been installed. Show the set configuration and match on Juniper-AIS. The configuration for the AI scripts 5.x family is shown here, but the 4.x configuration is similar and will include the use of commit scripts. To remove AI scripts, Edit the configuration and delete the Juniper AIS group and its associated apply group settings and commit. Exit the configuration mode and run the command request system scripts delete. This should remove AI scripts in entirety, but you should confirm so by running show version once more. Let's again assume that they are installed, but this time since we are using the AI scripts 5.x family, we can alternately use the op remove jais remove dash jais dash configuration true command to achieve the same result. Notice that the AI scripts bundle and the configuration have both been deleted in one operation. Returning back to the actions menu, locate install event profile under device operations. You can apply a specific device group or use its default settings, select an event profile or use its default settings, and choose whether you wish to remove the scripts bundle after installation. Typically, you do not need to do so as the file size is relatively small. You also have the option of having ServiceNow apply the groups and apply groups configuration, or you can commit the settings manually if needed. The configuration can be found in the ServiceNow user guide. 
Determine whether you would like to schedule the event profile installation at a later time. If not, click the Submit button to proceed. Some AI scripts releases are incompatible with particular Junos releases and should not be installed. Such versions will be flagged under the Exposure column on the right-hand side of the window. Confirm they say None and click Continue to proceed, and then click Install. Clicking the job ID and then double-clicking the job shown in the list will reveal a pop-up window. You can click the small triangle on the left-hand side of the window to expand or collapse the installation status details. It is advantageous to define device groups so that you can more easily select and apply features such as event profiles, auto-submit policies, and address groups in a logical fashion. Expand device groups and click Create Device Group. I recommend defining the device group names with a physical and logical meaning so that they can be located and filtered on in the various menus. For simplicity, we'll use only the device family names for now. Select the defined organization and click Add. Repeat this process as needed. You can see that our demonstration has two devices in the SRX LN family. We will select them, add them to the corresponding device group, and repeat for the remaining devices in their device families. From the Actions menu, choose Associate Device Groups and locate the appropriate group from the drop-down menu. Click Submit. If many devices are selected, or if they span several pages, you can use the Actions menu, Clear All Selections option to reflect zero selected devices. You may need to define event profiles specific to a network function or device family. For our example, we will build event profiles by the device family. First, let's clone the default event profile and notice what happens when we uncheck the entire list of events on the first page. After clicking Submit and returning to the Profiles page, we can observe that all 100 events from that page are no longer included in the profile. Now, let's define profiles for each managed device family. Return to the Profiles page, select the event profile for a particular device family, in this case SRXLN, and use the Actions menu to choose the Push to Devices operation. Select the devices in that family. Notice that we have the same installation options as before, and click Submit. Be sure to check the exposures, and if applicable, click Submit and then Install. Diving into the installation details, we can see that since an event profile had already been installed, there is no longer a need for ServiceNow to apply configuration settings on the devices, and that step is not included in the job. This will only be true for AI Scripts 5.x. AI Scripts 4.x will require a commit for every installation or push of an event profile. Now expand the Address Group menu and click Create Address Group. We'll define two of them for this example. Once defined, you can select from the list and use the Actions menu to associate devices to the address for the physical location, ship to location, or both. Click the green plus icon. Select the appropriate devices and click Submit to apply the settings. Let's do the same for the other address and the remaining devices. The ServiceNow Devices menu will now reflect the device group, address group, and installed event profile settings. We can refine the device group names and create additional device groups as needed. Let's include the address group name to the device group, separating the event profile name by a hyphen. Repeat this process until we have all needed device groups defined. Returning to the ServiceNow Devices menu, select the devices to assign the new device groups and use the Actions menu to associate them to that device group. Click Submit to save the changes. Repeat as needed and confirm the new settings. Most initial configuration is now complete, so let's look at some information found in the dashboards. Click Dashboard at the top of the menu. You will see some charts indicating the number of incidents by device and platform. 
Incidents are Juno's hardware and software faults that have triggered the AI scripts to perform troubleshooting data collection. Clicking the Service Central menu will reveal information for incidents related to priority, severity, and those assigned or flagged to particular Juno Space users, which we will see later. The Incidents menu found by expanding Service Central will show you a list of device fault events and their corresponding information. You can find the fault type, its defined priority level, and select it to use the Actions menu to yield additional information about what has been collected. Let's look at the Juniper Message Bundle, or JMB, that ServiceNow has obtained from the device. You can select the original unfiltered JMB or the filtered information as defined in the organization. The Manifest page contains information specific to that event, including a URL for the associated Knowledge Base article. The Attachments page includes the various device statistics and parameters collected at the time of the fault, which can be viewed in the browser or downloaded to the local workstation. The logs page is similar. An incident can be assigned ownership to one Juno Space user and can be flagged to multiple users. The users can receive an email with information about the incident. You can apply these settings by selecting an incident and choosing the respective option from the Actions menu. I have already defined two users named User1 and User2. We will assign ownership of this incident to User1 and flag it for User2. To open a JTAC case with ServiceNow for a given incident, Select it and then select Submit Case from the Actions menu. You will have the options to include or remove email addresses to be copied on case notes and status updates, specify a follow-up method by which you wish to be contacted, provide your internal tracking number, set the case priority, and append synopsis and description notes to the templated information. Core files, if available, can be collected and uploaded to the case by selecting them from the core file list at the bottom of the window. You can optionally choose to delete them from the device after submitting the case. The incidents window will reflect the status as submitted. Soon after, the status will change to created with the JTAC case number shown. You can view all open cases and recently closed JTAC cases from your organization by selecting the View Tech Support Cases menu item. In the Information submenu, you will find the Messages menu option. This is where maintenance or downtime notifications for the Juniper Network support systems will appear. Double-clicking a message will reveal additional information. ServiceNow will also collect weekly device snapshots used to determine proactive bug notifications and end-of-life reporting in Service Insight. The collection and upload status of such snapshots can be found in the Device Snapshots menu. Warning and errors will appear toward the left side of the window and you can hover the mouse cursor over the red icon to reveal additional information. In this example, snapshots are not being collected because the device partition is becoming full. The status will appear as being skipped. Once you delete files from the skip devices var temp directory, you can create an on-demand device snapshot from the ServiceNow device actions menu or wait until the next weekly collection interval occurs. The notifications menu allows you to define which ServiceNow behaviors will trigger email and or SNMP traps to be sent. The most important notification will probably be the new incident detected trigger. You can select whether the JMB will be included in the email. You can also click the small triangle icon next to Apply Filters to limit the notification processing. This concludes part two of our video series. Please proceed to the third video. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.